All right, in this video, we're going to be learning a whole new set of trig identities. These are kind of some formulas that we know are true. Definitely want to make sure you get your notes out and you're ready to go. That way you could write these down and be ready to um, put them on your trig identity sheets. That way we can use them. Also probably going to, have, going to want to have out your unit circle in this video because a lot of things I'm going to refer to are in that unit circle. All right, so first off, the sum of difference formulas. What are they for? Well, these formulas are used if angles are being added or subtracted within the trigonomic function. So notice an example like this where we have um, sine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. Okay, so that is where we clearly see that we have addition going on inside the trig function. Here's another one with radians, cosine of pi over 2 minus pi over 6. So, without further ado, here are our sum of difference formulas. Here are the ones for sine, so make sure we guys get these written down here. And um, the ones, whoop, sorry about that. <laughs> the ones for sine are sine of x plus y equals sine of x times cosine of y plus sine of y times cosine of x. So make sure you notice the difference between um, the fact that we're using sine and that x and y are the different angles. So we've got sine of x cosine of y plus sine of y times cosine of x. Now for sine of subtraction, we got sine of x cosine of y minus sine of y cosine of x. So these formulas look very familiar instead of the addition though, it's for addition and we have subtraction for subtraction. Be careful, they both have sine x cosine y in the front, sine y cosine x in the back, but the matters is the sine in between. So we're going to put these formulas to use in a second. But up next here are the cosine, or the, I'm sorry, the, co yeah, the cosine formulas for cosine of addition, cosine of subtraction. Now these ones look a little bit different, so just take some major notes of this. Again, you will be allowed to put these onto your formula sheet. But cosine of addition actually uses subtraction. So we have cosine of x times cosine of y minus sine of x times sine of y. When you have cosine of subtraction, we actually use addition here, and that's cosine of x times cosine of y plus sine of x times sine of y. So notice that the cosine formulas and the sine formulas look very, very different. So make sure you have them written down so we can refer back to them, okay? All right, so here's the ones for tangent. Tangents look even more strange, okay? Um, tangent of x plus tangent of y equals tangent of x plus tangent of y in the numerator, and the denominator is 1 minus tangent x times tangent y. Tangent with subtraction, in the, de in the numerator we have tangent x minus tangent y, in the denominator we have 1 plus tangent x times tangent y. Now there's many uses of these formulas, we're going to go through a couple of them in this video, but it's important that you understand that there are many uses and that we're going to use these formulas exactly as they are written, so make sure you um, kind of take note of that. Alright, so the first thing we can do with these formulas is we can actually help us find trig functions that are not so noticeable on our unit circle. For example, when we look at our unit circle, we could find sine, cosine, or tangent of the main angles, 30, 45, 60, 90, and then any multiple of those as we go around the unit circle. So for example, if I wanted you to find sine of 105 before this video, you probably would have just go to your calculator, put in degree mode, and type in sine of 105 degrees. And now, what I'm telling you is that we don't have to do that. We can now get an exact answer with our trig functions. So what we want to do is we want to find a way to create 105 degrees using two angles that we do know. So what two angles do we know from our unit circle that if you add it together get 105 degrees? Well for example I could do 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. 60 degrees plus 45 degrees is 105 degrees. Another option I could have used would be an 135 degrees minus 30 degrees. Again, those are both angles that I know on my unit circle. There's actually a couple other different options you might be able to use with this, and it doesn't matter which one you choose, you will get the exact same answer. So let's go ahead and write this as sine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to use our sine of addition formulas. The sine of addition formulas, hopefully you have them written down, would be sine of the first angle, 60, times cosine of the second angle, 45 degrees, plus sine of the second angle, 45 degrees, cosine of the first angle, 60 degrees. Okay, now it is multiplication. In the, in the two terms you create, there is multiplication, so the order you do those doesn't matter, but it is important that you understand that the first guy has the sine of 60, the back guy has the sine of the 45, and then for cosine it's switched. The first guy has the cosine of 45, the back guy has the cosine of 60. Now I could use my um, formulas here, or I could use actually my unit circle. So sine of 60 degrees is radical 3 over 2, 
Cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. Sine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. All right, now let me just do a little bit of multiplication here. Radical 3 times radical 2 is radical 6 over 2 times 2 is 4. Plus radical 2 times 1 is radical 2 over 2 times 2 is 4. And I get a nice solid final answer. I already have common denominator, so I could do radical 6 plus radical 2 all over 4. Nothing more you could do to that. Just leave that answer as such. And there is your final answer. Radical 6 plus radical 2 over 4. So now that is an exact answer. If we type in sine of 105 degrees in our calculator, we would get the same decimal equivalent. But what's nice is that we now have a way to get an exact answer. All right, let's take a look at another one here, cosine of pi over 2. Now, once again, or pi over 12, sorry. We don't have a pi over 12 on our unit circle. So we want to find two angles that are on our unit circle that we actually do recognize and can use. Now, I will note that pi over 12 is a radian. A lot of times kids have a uh, hard, difficult time trying to figure out what two radians or what two fractions combine to make pi over 12. So some kids will prefer to change pi over 12 to degrees real quick by multiplying by a conversion factor. Um, well, that's not a conversion factor. The conversion factor is multiplying by 180 degrees over pi. And when you do so, the pi's cancel, and you get 180 divided by 12, which is 15 degrees. So basically, pi over 12 is 15 degrees. So if we look at this as 15 degrees instead of pi over 12, for some students, a little bit easier. So the first thing I notice is that 45 degrees minus 30 degrees is 15 degrees. So there's my two angles that I know from the unit circle that I could use. So I'm going to write this as cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Now pull out your formula for cosine. Here we go. It's cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle. So it's a little bit different than that sine formula. It's a minus, but we're going to actually use a plus. That's how it works for cosine. It's kind of opposite of how you would think. And then we have sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and use our, um, you know, our formulas or use our, our unit circle to figure this stuff out. So cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees is radical 3 over 2. And sine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. And sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So let's see here. We get radical 6 over 4 plus uh, radical 2 over 4. Add those together with our common denominator, we get radical 6 plus radical 2 all over 4. Once again, you could use your calculator type in cosine 15 degrees, you're going to get a decimal. But this value right here would be the exact answer for that decimal. Okay, we could also use these formulas to go backwards to take some trig functions that maybe we don't know, like 42 and 12 degrees. I have no idea what 42 and 12 degrees are. Certainly don't recognize them on my unit circle anywhere, but I could use the formulas in reverse to take this kind of a long trig expression and write it with only one trig function. So the first thing I've got to figure out is, is this sine or cosine? Well, the fact that it goes sine, cosine, and then cosine, sine tells me that it's a sine function. Because if you remember, the formulas for cosine were cosine, cosine, and then and sine sine together. So this is definitely a sine function. And sine function is true to what it says. So if it's a minus, I'm actually going to use a minus sign. And it would be the first angle, 42 degrees, minus the second angle, 12 degrees. So this is nothing more than sine of 30 degrees. Once again, I had to first identify that this is sine. I then had to put the two angles together using the proper value, which is subtraction sign here. So again, sine of 30 degrees is something I know. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. There's your final answer. Pretty nice, pretty simple. Okay, <coughs> we could also use these uh, ideas to talk about inverse trig functions. Now, this is definitely a little bit of a tricky problem. It's probably going to take me a little bit to explain, but I think if you recall everything we learned about inverse trig functions, you'll find it not too bad. All right, so first here, let's think here. All right. Remember, inverse functions are nothing more than angles. So before I even, I have to understand that this right here is nothing more than an angle theta. And this trig function back here, this cosine inverse, is nothing more than another angle we'll call alpha. So I first need to establish what these two angles are. All right, so let's see here. Tangent inverse of 1. Where on the unit circle is tangent 1? Well, that is something that's very, very common. You should know this. This is 45 degrees. So theta is 45 degrees. At 45 degrees on the unit circle, tangent is 1. So I know what theta is. That helps make this a lot easier. That's 45 degrees. Now, back here, it's an x. So unfortunately, 
like never we're gonna eight, never really be able to figure out exactly what that is. It's always gonna have to be based on a picture. Now, if you recall our lesson on inverse trigs, we talked about this. So here's a picture of alpha, and according to cosine, that's opposite. I'm sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is x over one. So if here's alpha. The adjacent side is x, the hypotenuse is 1. All right, so now I have to find that missing side, because I am going to need that missing side. You'll see in one second. Well, we know that a squared, that's x squared, plus the missing side squared, we'll call that b squared, equals the hypotenuse squared, which is 1. So we know that b squared equals 1 minus x squared. And then I've got to take the square root of both sides, so we get that this missing side is 1 minus x squared. All of that should be familiar from our lesson on inverse trig functions. So now, watch how I'm actually good to go for this problem. So I have cosine of theta plus alpha. Well, that's cosine of addition. So here we go. That's going to be cosine of alpha, cosine of theta, minus, remember it's a plus sign. You'd use a minus sign for cosine. Sine of theta, sine of alpha. Okay, let's not panic here. Cosine of theta. Well, that's cosine of 45 degrees. Okay, and then I have cosine of alpha, which I could get by looking at that picture in one second. Minus sine of theta, sine of theta, of theta is 45 degrees, so that's going to be sine of 45 degrees, and then sine of alpha, and I could get sine of alpha by looking at that picture. So let's keep going here. Okay, cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of alpha, well, all i got to do is look at this picture right here to find cosine of alpha. Well, alpha, there's alpha, cosine is x over 1, so there we go, x over 1. How easy was that? Minus sine of 45 degrees is also radical 2 over 2 times sine of alpha. Well, again, all I got to do is look at the picture. Sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared all over 1. So basically, I'm done. I can just kind of clean this up a little bit. I can multiply, get x radical 2 over 2 minus, this is going to be kind of ugly. There's nothing really more I could do. Um, the denominator is going to be 2. One thing I could do if you wanted, you could actually do radical 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared, and then because they're both in square roots, you can multiply that 2 inside and get 2 minus 2x squared. So you could do that if you want, it makes it look a little bit cleaner. Um, and then of course you do have a common denominator, so I could write this a final answer as x radical 2 minus the square root of 2 minus 2x squared all over 2. So a very ugly answer, but it is an exact answer to what that value is. So if somebody told you, hey, x is 36 degrees, you could use that formula right there to solve for what that value would be. Okay, what else could we use these trig functions for, these trig identities for, right? These addition, these subtraction identities. Well, another thing we could use them for is to verify or prove identities, right? We've been working on verifying and proving, so here we go. So I have... Um, Let's see here. I have cosine of uh, pi over 2 minus x. So let me go ahead. I have a cosine of subtraction. So here I go. That's going to be cosine of pi over 2 times cosine of x plus, remember it's a plus sign when it's minus, first cosine, sine of pi over 2 times sine of x. Okay, let's see here. Cosine of pi over 2. I can actually look at my unit circle. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So I got 0 times cosine of x plus sine of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, times sine of x. Okay, well, 0 times anything is 0, so that's out. 1 times sine is sine, so I just verified that the left side equals the right side. So there we go, we were able to use a verifying. <coughs> okay, here's another one. We could actually in, kind of create new reduction formulas. Basically, we can create new formulas, essentially. All I want to do is, and I don't try to, not try to sugarcoat this or make it anything different than it is, I just want to use my formulas, right? So let's see here. So this is going to be cosine of the first guy times cosine of the second guy, 3 pi over 2. Instead of a minus, remember i got to use a plus. Sine of theta times sine of that back angle, 3 pi over 2. Now, I have no idea what theta is, so unfortunately that cosine of theta is going to stay cosine of theta, but I do know cosine of 3 pi over 2, oh, look at your unit circle, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so this, this is uh, cosine of theta, which I don't know, but that's okay, times 0, plus sine of theta times Let's see here, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So at the end of the day, cosine times 0 is nothing, it's gone, and I get a final answer of negative sine theta. So basically, this is like a simplify problem, right? I took something that looked kind of ugly, kind of strange, and I was able to simplify it down to nothing more than negative sine theta. All right, try this one out. 
Okay, now for the first time, I'm going to have to use one of my tangent formulas. So be careful with using your tangent formulas. Let's go through it real quick. So I got two values, theta and 3 pi. So here I go. The formula is tangent of theta plus tangent of 3 pi. Now, of course, I've been using these formulas for a long time, so I have them all remembered, but you're allowed to have them on your sheet. On the bottom is 1 minus tangent of theta times tangent of 3 pi. Now, 3 pi actually is on your unit circle. All you got to do is go around the circle multiple times. So 3 pi is actually the exact same as regular, just regular old pi. So let's see here. I don't know what tangent of theta is, and that's okay. So I have tangent of of theta, and that could just stay like that, plus, okay, tangent of 3 pi, if I look at pi, because 3 pi and pi are the same value on the unit circle, and let's see here, tangent is y over x, that'd be 0 over negative 1, so that's a big fat 0, okay, on the bottom I have 1 minus tangent of theta times, well, once again, tangent of 3 pi is, you know, looking at pi is, is 0. So let's see what happens here. On top, I just get tangent, because tangent plus 0 is, is tangent. On the bottom, I get 1, because tangent of theta times 0 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. So my final answer would be tangent or tangent over 1. So I was able to take something a little bit complicated looking and make it really, really simple. All right. Almost done here. What else can we do with these awesome new formulas? Well, the last thing we could do is solve trig equations, right? That's something else we've been working on in class, is solving trig equations. So here we go. Let's go ahead and solve this nice trig equation here. All right, so I got a whole lot going on, but everything's going to be really nice and simple right away. So first off, let's deal with this guy right here, okay? This is sine of addition. So let's see, that's going to be sine of x cosine of pi over 4 plus sine of pi over 4 times cosine of x. Remember, that's the cosine, or the, I'm sorry, the sine formula that I just used right there. Plus, okay, now for this back guy, that's going to be sine of x cosine of pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 4 times cosine of x equals negative 1. All right, now let's start to clean everything up here couple things I notice right away. First off, I have a negative sine pi over 4 cosine x, and I have a positive sine of 4 right here. So here's my positive sine pi 4 cosine x. Here's a negative sine pi over 4 cosine x. So those guys can cancel out. Now, my other two terms look very familiar. In fact, they're exactly the same. So sine of x cosine pi over 4. So I have 2 sine of x cosine pi over 4 equals negative 1. Now, cosine of pi over 4, that's an actual value that I could look on my unit circle and find. So that's 2 times sine of x times cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. So now this 2 and this 2 can kind of cancel out, and I get sine of x times radical 2 equals negative 1. Okay, I'm almost done. Now, again, I'm trying to solve this trick equation, right? I'm able to reduce this kind of ugly-looking thing down to nothing more than sine. So at the end of the day, I'm left with, I'm going to kind of have to come over here to solve this, I have sine of x equals negative 1 over radical 2. I just divided both sides by that radical 2. Don't really like that radical 2 down there, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by radical 2, and I get sine of x equals negative radical 2 over 2. So now I'm trying to ask myself, where on the unit circle, what angle for x, if I plug it in, will produce a sine value of negative radical 2 over 2? So I'm looking at my unit circle. I see it's going to happen at 5 pi over 4 radians. That's where sine is negative radical 2 over 2. I also see that it's going to happen at 7 pi over 4 radians. So I see it happening in two places. Now, obviously, there could be an infinite answers, right? Because I can continue to go around and around and around in a circle, like we talked about in our solving trig equation unit. But if I only want to answer on the unit circle from 0 to 2 pi, those would be my two answers where that happens. So again, all I did was I utilized my angles that I knew. So, what's the benefits of this video? Well, we learned a couple new trig identities, a couple new formulas that we know are true, and we learned how we could use them in several different ways to solve these problems. You just got to be careful that you understand how they're used. Put them on your trig identity sheet. You're allowed to use that on a test and quiz, and we're just going to work more and more in class on actually how to utilize these problems to help us verify, simplify, and even solve equations.